Hi guys, welcome back to Camna Studio. In this episode, we're going to talk about a quite important topic, a recommendation, a suggestion for those of you who are about to start or are already doing archaeological work, studying at the university, getting prepared for an archaeological life. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so the main purpose of this video is try to let you, make you understand why it is important to be exposed, to experience different types of archaeological work, archaeological excavation. This will enlarge your, obviously, your knowledge, your experience. This will help you in that specific context, as well as in other contexts. And that is very, very important. I'm talking by experience. When I started to change my standard type of excavation, the normal context I was used to excavate, things started to change. Especially in the elaboration phase afterwards, when you have to try to interpret the data you have gathered, if you have different experiences of different contexts, again, once again, I want to say this, you're going to be facilitate, you're going to have just more ease in trying to understand what is going on in that darn place, okay? So, we're going to go through five main types of archaeological excavation, okay? And the different uh, variations inside. Let's start. Okay, the first group of archaeological excavation types I would like to explore with you is that by different chronologies slash cultures, probably the most important. What am I talking about? Well, first I would say letter A, probably the most important for me was that to try to participate within a prehistoric archaeological project. That's just going to give you, it's going to radically change your perspective if you never did, obviously. If that's your main type, then you're going to have to try to experiment something else. Obviously, it's a one or the other type of choice. In any case, most people, most students usually do normal historical type of archaeological excavations or even more recent things like medieval or contemporary. So a prehistoric type is really going to give you the rules because we have very small sedimentation. Uh, you have to be extremely accurate. You have to pick up every single little bone, flint. You have to record every variation in color, what is happening in the soil, uh, what's inside the soil, the inclusions. I mean, there's so many things you have to do that is really going to get your, your brain to work and you're going to apply perhaps certain parts of your knowledge, your gain knowledge there to other field work. That is why it's so important to participate in, for example, a cave or a shelter, something like that. A Neanderthal, but also sapiens, no problem. That's always going to be something that's going to help you throughout your archaeological career. No question about it. Obviously, if this is something you're already doing, then go and be exposed to a, a more historical type of, uh, of archaeological excavation where you're going to go more in depth on ceramics, because usually that's the main difference, uh, on buildings, the foundations of buildings, or, for example, even medieval context, where you're going to have a higher elevation of the walls, where you try to have to understand what's going on in those walls and things like that. So. It's good to change, to shift the, in the chronological, but obviously at the same time, I would say also cultural, which means in different parts of the world, obviously, very simply. I'm just going to give you some examples, okay? I'm not going to be thorough in every single group, otherwise it's going to take a, a three-hour video. But I think you're understanding what I'm trying to say. Let's proceed to our second group. Our second group of type of excavation I recommend you do is something where you are focusing on different building materials, okay? Now, the main focus usually is stone. 
which can be as a building material or carved, where something has been carved in order to have to obtain, for example, a house, a pit, a tomb, or something like that. Okay, that's going to be probably number one, and it's very easy to be exposed to that type of experience. Otherwise, as you can imagine, mud brick, something paramount. If you're in the Near East, it's good to start to get uh, gain some experience in that because it's kind of hard and. Practically all sites in the classic Mesopotamia use that, so it's it's a good idea to, to gain knowledge there. But not only, also wood, charcoal, uh, in, in, in some environments, in some more recent, but also even ancient types of, a, of archaeological context, you may find that type of building material perfectly preserved. It happens in Egypt. It happens also in the Caucasus, in different in the, in the, in the Kurgan tombs. That's what happened to us. So it, that's already again gonna enhance your experience, as you can imagine. Although it's it's something rare. Plus, another group I would like to to highlight is we could call it soil. Yes, because a lot of uh, stratigraphic units, a lot of context, are taking place in something made or dug in the soil. For example, uh, pit houses. Yes, there are dwellings excavated in the terrain, in the soil. So you have to know how to, how to understand the different passages from the different strata. What's happening in there, very difficult, but it's excellent experience. It's going to help you so much in other types of excavation. But also pits, normal pits with, with uh, throw away stuff inside with uh, rubbish inside, bins, but also earthen types of tombs, uh, peat, where we have a lot of peat. All these types of soil is an excellent, again, once again, I want to underline this type of archaeological experience, excavation experience. Let's proceed to our next group. Obviously, another very important type of excavation activities I recommend is the context. What do I mean by context? Well, for example, domestic. Try to excavate something where people are living. Funerary, where people are burying their deceased. Any type, obviously, any type. Cremation, inhumation, any type. Sacred, that's very interesting. If you, if you, if you can, jump in a project where they have a, somehow a religious type of uh, environment, of context, something sacred with some rituals are going on. There is, that is so stimulating. So as you can imagine, it's, that's something uh, of paramount importance. If you can, you can't miss that. That's excellent experience once again, but also defensive. For example, maybe you're in a stronghold or a fortress or something like that. Not necessarily medieval. Remember, you can go back to prehistory actually. Well, let's say proto-history. <laughs> Uh, but also productive environments. Absolutely, that's probably one of the main types of environments along with dwellings, along with hamlets, villages or cities that you're going to excavate where people are doing, are creating, are crafting something. That is another absolutely fundamental type of context to excavate. Highly recommended. But also something like a nomadic type of environment. That's something I did, for example. Very stimulating because there are not that many traces. So you almost have to deduct what is happening. Infer from the pieces of data you have what is happening, what is taking place, what is missing. Uh, because even something missing is giving us data. Remember, always remember that. Not only things that are present, even absence is very telling. Okay, proceed to our next group. Our fourth group, we could call it, within this excavation types, uh, different priorities. Yes. So, apart from a normal excavation where you have access to the, to the excavation wherever you want, very easy, you don't have deadlines, something like that. That's something, obviously, that everyone <laughs> is going to experience. We're talking more of, for example, a, a mission, an excavation abroad in a foreign country where you have to focus the excavation campaign, perhaps in one or two months. That's what happens when European or Western civilization, we could call excavations and projects, go in the Middle East or in the, on the Far East. You have just a limited of time, you have to gather everything and record everything perfectly, then bring it back and elaborate. 
So that's something to, to, to keep in mind and it's very helpful in order to optimize everything, every passage, as you can imagine. But not only a rescue excavation, uh, that's also very important because you have to be quick. You can't waste time. You have to somehow eliminate certain passages, certain procedures, or dedicate specific or more time to specific passages, it's difficult. It's something very difficult, which again will give you great experience and you're really gonna learn how to optimize your time, which is something very precious in archeology. span But also, for example, something uh, like urban excavation, that's something a little more difficult probably to find access because it's a very pro environment. In any case, if you have the possibility, another excellent experience uh, excavating within a city, within people living around you, moving, who want to know, who want to ask. You have to be quick. You're going to find modern structures above, on top, in the middle. So that's also a great experience, as you can imagine. Plus, I would also say, as a last category, also there are ma many others, underwater archaeology, which is a whole completely different type. But that is absolutely something that will strictly and harshly determine your priorities, that's for sure. Let's proceed. Okay, our last group I would call of different landscape, which can be climate or terrain driven, where we have the steppe uh, or something more fluvial, marine, the jungle, the desert, the icelands, the plains, the highlands, uh, all these types of environments, which obviously are going to somehow have a repercussion on what you're excavating. Obviously, if what you're excavating had a similar environment in the past. So also think about that clearly. But not only, uh, these are so, you know, there's so many types of landscapes. There are also frontiers, which I think are very stimulating. Borderlands of political nature, but also cultural nature. But not only, even middle grounds where we have melange, where we have mixture of these elements but also in the passages of elevation where we have plains and highlands all, all of a sudden you have going to have a completely different uh, arrangement culture types of settlements there that is why it's, it's so important to try to uh, be exposed once again so to different completely different elements archaeological environments archaeological context and everything we said in order to gain the maximum type of experience and do the best you can Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please put your comments here below for other archaeological excavation types you think are useful. And remember that in the end, understanding our past defines our future. Thank you. Hi guys, if you want to discover more about archaeology and our ancient past from a different perspective, make sure to click on the Camnus logo here below. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will never miss an episode and join the archaeological community in search of the truth.